America is not a racist country. Ladies and gentlemen, this story that I'm about to tell you just further proves that America has no redeeming qualities at all. Man, my heart goes out to this woman. Her name is Lizzie Pugh. She's a 77-year-old woman, and she got hit with a black while banking. So she won at a casino up in Michigan, and a bank refused to cash her check. And probably um, the check was bigger than the salaries that they made at the bank. That's probably why they were butt sore at this woman. So at 71, Lizzie Pugh thought the days of Jim Crow and being bullied for being black was over. But it was far from over and mm, mm, mm. So Detroit Public Schools retiree had won a five-figure slot machine jackpot. Well, good for her. During a church outing at a casino. And she went to the bank to deposit her winnings, which was in a form of a check. All right. But uh, three white bank employees told her the check was fraudulent. Here we go with that crap again. Pew said and refused to give it back to her. So not only would they not deposit this check for her, they wouldn't even hand the check back to her. This does not happen to any other group of people in America. But whenever we talk about these incidents, they try to call us racist because we're talking about it. Can you imagine that? They are carrying out the action, but we are just talking about it. And just talking about it makes you equally as racist. <laughs> Woo, y'all. Okay. I couldn't really believe they did that to me, Pew said in a recent interview. I was devastated. I kept asking, how do you know the check is not real? And, and don't the banks have the ability to check or even contact the, the business that wrote the check? I mean, this is just unbelievable how so many people in the black community could take a check to the bank and they will say it's fraudulent without even checking. And so far, y'all, I haven't done one single story where the check was fraudulent. Every single time these accusations have been made, the check was legitimate. Okay. And they just insisted that it wasn't, you know, it was just fraudulent. So, we're, you know, she's supposed to just take their word that the check is fraudulent without the check even being verified. She should just take their word. So she said she was terrified. And I can understand this is an older woman. Pew still gets emotional when she talks about that April day. Only now she is armed with a federal lawsuit that she hopes will shed light on what she alleged was blatant racism by employees at Fifth Third Bank in Livonia, Michigan. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. According to her lawsuit filed August 29th in U.S. District Court, Pew's check was good. She got it back after much persistence that day, drove to the nearby Chase Bank and deposited it there. So the Chase Bank didn't have a problem taking the check, but I've heard some nightmares about them too. So to think that maybe they would have police coming and running at me, it was humiliating and stressful, Pew said, for someone to just accuse you of stealing. I'm 71 years old. 
why would I steal a check and try to cash it? I just didn't think anybody would do that. Well, these people would. They've been historically, what do they say now, y'all? What's, what's their favorite thing? Oh, that's victim blaming. Well, they've been victim blaming black people for 500 straight years. <laughs> I love it. I said that to somebody online and they got fuming mad at me, but it's the truth. They sure didn't tell me I lied. So anyway, back to the story. Fifth Third Bank did not respond to several efforts by the free press to obtain a comment. According to the lawsuit, this is what landed Pugh, an Alabama native and church deacon who worked for the Detroit public schools for 36 years in federal court. On April 9th, Pugh traveled with her church group to a casino and resort on an organized outing. While there, Pew hit the jackpot on a slot machine and elected to pay her taxes on her winnings at the casino, which issued the rest of her prize money in a check and a, a small amount of cash. So the lawsuit doesn't specify the amount of the check and I don't think they should, that's private. Nobody should know what her winnings are that can put this woman in danger. So two days after the casino outing, Pew drove to the Fifth Third Branch to open a savings account and deposit her winnings. After waiting several minutes, a bank employee called Pew into her office where Pew explained her intentions to open an account and then handed the employee her casino winnings, so which was a check. The employee, um, you know, asked her for ID and she provided her driver's license. So Pew obliged, explained that she was retired and that the check was for uh, money. She won at the casino. The check contained the casino's logo, the address of the casino, Pew's name, and the same address that was listed on her driver's license. Well, that doesn't sound like a person that's trying to steal. So on the memo, it read, slot jackpot. She left the room and came back and told me the check was fraudulent and she could not give it back to me. So this is what she recalled. So she put up a protest and she says, I'm like, why? It's not fraudulent. The employee came in, um, uh, a second bank employee came in and they're all, so all together, three bank employees called her check fraudulent. Now, three people, nobody had the common sense to verify the funds. How many times have we seen this? How many times we have seen this multiple times and these incidents always consistently occur to black men and women that bring checks up to these branches, these bank branches. And it always seems to be these banks that are big out here. Wow. Employee number two proved equally problematic. She also insisted the check was fraudulent and would not return it. By then, proved, uh, you know, her nerves were rattled and she was angry. And uh, she called her son, who urged her to call the casino for help. She told him, um, I'm not leaving without my check. And I don't blame her for saying that. She had every right to do that. She didn't do anything wrong. They always try to make you seem like you've done something wrong when nothing was wrong. And you know, and you know what I think a lot of this is, y'all, is psychological warfare, which they have been playing on us forever. And then she told the bank employees the same thing. I told them I wasn't leaving. 
you need to call the police or better yet, I'll call myself, we'll call Pew. But the two bank employees, both of them white, refused to call 911 and summons a third employee. So uh, two of the employees took Pew's check to the office of the third bank worker. After several minutes, Pew went into the employee's office and she wanted her check back. Again, she was told the same story. The check was no good and the fifth third bank would not allow her to open an account and deposit the check. These people are just straight up nasty. These folks are just, they are, wow. Pew persisted and she wouldn't leave without the check. And eventually the bank gave it back to her. She successfully deposited the check at another bank where the check cleared the next day. And so she opened up a Chase bank account and she was able to put it over there and it cleared the next day. Wow. I was really, really nervous. Pew recalled of uh, those first few moments then back, you know, back in her car in the bank's parking lot. I had to sit there for a minute. I took a picture of the bank. I had no idea what the address was or anything like that. And I left. All right. So Pew's niece, a 50 year old Yolanda McGee, who convinced her to file a lawsuit. Initially, Pew was adamant, oppo adamantly opposed to taking legal action. And she was convinced that nothing would change if she filed a lawsuit. But her niece insisted her aunt had been hurt, humiliated, disrespected, said McGee, who remembers her aunt crying on the phone after the bank incident, asking how a uh, blessing it was to win, you know, to hit the jackpot. And it was, you know, a lot of people don't, they'll go to the casino for years and never hit the jackpot. So she said, you know, her winning turned into something hurtful. And that's exactly what they wanted. They wanted to hurt this woman. I told her this was a violation of your civil rights. There are laws in place now where you can fight. Let's fight this, McGee recalled telling her aunt. Fifth Third Bank needs to know that they humiliated you. What they did was wrong and they need to answer for this. But her aunt was scared, McGee said. The incident had rattled her. She got nervous going into businesses after the encounter at the bank. That's a shame. That's a shame. So she was fearful that something bad might happen. Then there were bad memories to contend with. Pew had experienced racism in the past and nothing was ever done. And the people got away with horrible things before. What had changed now, but, McKee, but her niece, McGee, wouldn't let it go. I encouraged her. I said, no, 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 no. We are not in the 1950s in Alabama. We're not in Jim Crow era. Well, there's some people that would debate you on that one. We are going to fight and no one's going to shame you, she said. So she helped her aunt find a lawyer and, you know, with experience in these sort of cases. Her name was Deborah Gordon. In 2020, Gordon handled a case that was similar to Pew's. One of her clients, a black man, had won an employment discrimination case, but the bank wouldn't cash his settlement check. So Gordon sued the bank. Which, uh, and what they did was eventually they issued an apology and settled the case confidentially. So Gordon, she was familiar with these banking while black incidents. So what happened to Lizzie was a really heartbreaking situation, Gordon said, given that she has lived through and have had a happy moment 
something she enjoyed be ruined by being humiliated. It's something Gordon has seen too many times. This is just extremely disheartening, Gordon said. It is really unfortunate these stereotypes continue to exist right here in our metro area. So, you know, Pew said she faced a lot of racism in Alabama and during Jim Crow, you know, because she's a, you know, back then she was a 71 year old woman. And she said racism was tolerated and celebrated. And she lived in fear during that time of her life. She moved to Detroit in 1971 at the age of 20. And she spent 36 years working at De uh, Detroit public schools and holding numerous jobs over the years, including a library clerk, shipping and receiving. She was a supervisor and a storekeeper. She retired in 2009 and has two grown sons. Though it has been decades since she left Alabama, she still can't stop talking about her childhood without choking up. So she must have really had it rough. Like a lot of people, you know, our people were literally terrorized down there in the South. And, and these folks have the nerve to look you in the face talking about you don't deserve reparations as if we don't have people that are still alive and walking this earth that have experienced the terrorism of racism from childhood to adulthood like those folks don't exist whatever so anyway um though it's been decades since she left alabama she still can't talk about her childhood without choking up so <clears throat> you know this is a shame i'm sorry this woman had to go through this i'm sure it was a happy day they said um she won five figures on the slots and just for this bank to turn her good experience into a nightmare which they did on purpose you know, you know, when you see these things happening too many times, y'all, this is a deliberate act that they're, you know, they're just doing this because they figure you're a black person and they can get away with doing this stuff to you. If it was a random thing here and there, okay, but we see this way too often. This is definitely done on purpose. It's no doubt about it. But I'm glad she lawyered up. I'm glad her niece convinced her to do something about it. And I hope whatever she gets, it, it, it's a big amount of money. She definitely deserves it. Y'all, please tell me what you think about this story. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.